there are few icons of aviation as instantly recognisable as the Chinook helicopter. When Miltech Simulations announced they were working on a Chinook, I was very excited, not only because it meant we were getting a Chinook in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but also because it was being developed by the same team that gave us one of my all-time favourite modules, the MV-22 Osprey. I've been looking forward to getting my hands on this module ever since. And I actually posted about the Osprey and how much I was looking forward to the Chinook a few months ago, in which I expressed my interest in helping with testing. I didn't hear back, but you can't blame a guy for trying. But that does mean that you can be sure that this review is completely impartial and not a paid endorsement or anything like that. The module is currently available from milsexsimulations.com for $35.99, which is about £27.99 at time of recording. For your money, you not only get a superb aircraft, but some missions to fly as well, which is one thing I've always felt MSFS doesn't have enough of, especially in the helicopter department. If fixed wing is your thing, then there's bush trips and challenges coming out your ears, but helicopters get a couple of discovery flights and that's it. Thankfully, some developers are producing missions for the helicopters, and Miltech have done exactly that. We're going to start off with a look around the aircraft and some of its features before embarking on a firefighting mission in the middle of London. Let's start with the textures. I've got the RAF livery applied currently, and the textures really are first rate. You can see every rivet and every join in the metalwork, and the decals are crisp and sharp. If we zoom out and look at the rotors, you can see that the mechanics are fully animated for movement of the cyclic forward, backwards, left and right. The collective up and down, and the pedals right and left. The textures look great inside too, with some nice weathering and wear and tear details. I've been flying this in the Quest 3 and I can read all the gauges clearly, and they've enabled the all-important VR zoom. You also get this tablet, which can be used to configure your flying experience. With it you can control the doors and open the ramp at the back. And if we walk through from the back, you can see more great details in here too. There's also a screen for loading your Chinook with a variety of different cargoes and personnel. Or a variety of external loads if you want to make things a bit more challenging. The config screen allows you to add a basic GPS system and then of course there's the mission screen, where you can select and launch the different missions available. Today we're going to be fighting fires in London. When you hit launch, you'll be relocated to the start point of your mission. The mission will start with the helicopter's engines running, however if you hadn't already started the helicopter, they'll immediately start to shut down, so just run through the start of procedure as normal. There is a checklist you can run through, but essentially it's battery on, start the APU, engine levers to GND, fuel switches to open, I typically just turn them all on, Then flick the engine start switch over to engine 1, and wait for it to start before switching it over to engine 2. While engine 1 warms up, let's set up our GPS. We're instructed to fly towards London City Airport, Echo Gamma Lima Charlie. So first of all, let's turn on our GPS system from the config page.
Select Direct2 and enter the airport code. Now this may sound obvious, but make sure you enter the correct code. The previous time I did this mission, I entered Echo Gamma Charlie Lima, which is somewhere completely different, although fortunately in roughly the same direction. It wasn't until I realised I was on the wrong side of Heathrow Airport that I figured out something had gone wrong. Okay, engine one is running, so let's start engine two. With both engines running, we can turn on the generators and turn off the APU. Move the engine control levers to the fly position, release the parking brake if it isn't already, and we should be ready to fly. As this is a tandem rotor aircraft, the rotational torque from the rotors counter each other out, so you don't need to worry about spinning round in circles as you lift off. The tandem rotor system also means it's remarkably stable and easy to manoeuvre at slow speeds. Also remember, this is a heavy lift helicopter, so unladen, it'll pick up very easily, and also means you need to be very gentle with the collective in order to maintain level flight. My only criticism at this point is that the GPS is a little small, and I find I need to use a VR zoom to see it clearly. I'm just approaching London, and already I can see a big cloud of smoke on the horizon. It's also just occurred to me as that British Airways flight passed closely overhead that I'm probably crossing the approach path for Heathrow. I suspect someone's going to have to do a go around. But this is an emergency. Lies hang in the balance and every second counts. Oh, there's Buckingham Palace. Let's go and take a closer look. I'm sure the fire can wait a little bit. I'm sure the King would appreciate my heroic efforts. Maybe give me a knighthood. Or possibly a court-martial for doing a low flyby on Buckingham Palace without authorization. We're getting close to the fire now, so I want to be low enough to assess the blaze when I get there, but not so low that I hit things like cranes and pointy buildings. There's St Paul's Cathedral on the right. Would get in a lot of trouble if I hit that. But we can start to see the flames ahead of us now. That's a pretty big fire. I want to be careful not to fly through the smoke so I don't crash into a building or anything that I can't see on the other side. Plus, I'm not sure ingesting smoke into the engines would be good for them. So now I just have to find some water. Fortunately, the Thames is nearby. When you select the fire bucket from the low screen, it isn't automatically attached to the hook of the helicopter. It appears on the ground and you have to pick it up. I'm going to ascend into a hover above the river so it's easy to find. Around 20 feet should be sufficient. Control is key here. We have a limited amount of space of all these bridges around, 
and obviously you want to burn the fire out as quickly as possible, but if you get yourself into VRS and crash the helicopter into the river, you're not going to be helping anyone. Now I'm in a hover, it's ideally where I'd like to engage the autopilot to hold me while I configure the helicopter for the fire bucket. According to the release notes that has been programmed in, we just need to wait for a Sobo to release the autopilot support for helicopters. For now though, I'll just engage active pause. When I select the bucket from the load screen, it appears off to our left. The screen also flashes the words middle hook at me. This is telling me that I need to prepare the middle hook. To do this, I go to the overhead panel and turn on the hook switch master. Set the other switch to PLT and turn the hook mode knob to middle. Different loads have different hook modes, so you need to be sure to select the correct one. Now I can turn off the active pause and try to position myself over the bucket. There's a radar-like display on the tablet which shows the load's relative position. You need to hold the dot inside the green circle for 4 seconds to hook the item. If you drift out of the picket zone, you have to reposition yourself and the time starts again. I drifted too far forward on my first attempt, so I need to reposition myself and try again. And got it. Next the tablet will tell you to pull up. You need to climb until this message disappears before you can descend again to scoop the water. Otherwise you end up dragging the bucket and breaking it. Once the message is gone, we can descend to pick up some water. You need to be below 20 feet for 3 seconds. I normally just count to 5 to be sure. And there we have a full bucket. Let's go fight that fire. You need to pass low and slow over the fire for the water to automatically deploy. The good news is that you don't have to press anything, so you can concentrate on flying the helicopter. In reality, you'd have crew to help you out. Just be sure of your low flying, not to catch the bucket on any tall pointy buildings. And there goes the first bucket, right in the middle of the fire. We split it into two smaller fires, so we'll need to do a couple more runs to finish it off. Scooping bucket two. and dropping bucket two. Scooping bucket three. And dropping bucket three. And the fire is out. The day is saved. Now, there is an optional objective to return to the airfield that you came from, but instead I'm going to carry on to London City Airport as it's closer. And it means we can explore some of London's landmarks while I talk about what this thing's like to fly. At low speeds, it's very easy to manoeuvre. Ground effect in particular works quite nicely on this. When you get low enough for it to take effect, it does act like a cushion and slow your descent a little. That's not to say you can just ditch the collective and let the helicopter deal with it, Power management is definitely a thing, but you also need to be careful not to balloon back up when you're expecting to land. At speed, it can be a bit more of a handful. Bear in mind that this thing is heavy, so when you get some speed up and try to turn, it's going to drift a bit. 
typically for a turn I find it helps to use a mixture of pedals and banking. If you just bank, it'll turn, but it'll take a sweet time doing it. And if you use just the pedals, you'll point in the right direction, but you'll keep flying sideways for a while. This slightly heavy handling does make flying through tight spaces at speed a little... interesting. Although, to be fair, it's probably not intended to be flown like that. I just want to take a moment to talk about the sound of this thing. It sounds so good. We get Chinooks flying over our house fairly frequently, and this is exactly what they sound like. My less aviation enthusiastic neighbours aren't as keen on it, but I love it. And if you take this thing out after dark and switch on the dome light, it looks very cool. I'm going to bring it into land on the runway. If you're heavily loaded, you could do a rolling landing, but I'm just going to do a little roll on touchdown. I've landed a bit more to the left than I intended, but that's okay. When it's time to taxi, you can turn on the power steering on the central pedestal. This will allow you to do much tighter turns and make it easier to manoeuvre on the ground. Like ground taxiing other rotorcraft with wheels, you can pitch forward with some collective to roll forward, pitch back to slow down, or use the brakes to stop and steer with the pedals. So, final thoughts. I was a little worried I'd overhyped this in my head, and that I might be underwhelmed with the actual aircraft. But I'm not disappointed in the slightest. Yes, it'd be nice to have the autopilot, but that should be on the way. I'm very pleased to see that Miltech are focusing on quality over quantity, and in my opinion, this is a first-rate aircraft. I hope you enjoy flying as much as I am, and if you like this video, I hope you hit like and subscribe. If you'd like to see me do any of the other missions, do let me know in the comments. Until next time, fly safe.